This is part 24 of Razor Pages tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss view components in ASP.NET Core with an example. Here is what we want to do. When we navigate to the employee list page, we see the list of employees. And when we navigate to the details page, we see employee specific details. And when we click the delete button, we see the delete confirmation page. So on these pages, in addition to the page specific content, we also want to display this employee headcount summary. Since we want to display the employee headcount summary on several pages, it makes sense to create a reusable component. What we do not want to do is include the code for the employee headcount summary on each page. This approach duplicates code. We can't use a partial view either because a partial view cannot have its own data access logic. It depends on the data passed from the parent view or razor page. We do not want to include the code that retrieves data on each page. This is again code duplication. We want something that can retrieve data independently and render. View component is a perfect choice for this. In the root project folder, let's create a new folder. Name it view components. We are going to place all of our view components in this folder. A view component is made of two things, code class and the associated view file. Let's place the code class within this view components folder. We'll discuss where to place the associated view file in just a bit. Since our view component displays employee headcount, let's call it headcount view component. View component name ends with the suffix view component and it also needs to derive from the base view component class. Let's bring in the required namespace. Just like a razor page or an MVC view, a view component also supports dependency injection. We want this headcount view component to retrieve employee headcount summary data. For that, we need to inject employee repository service into this view component. So let's include a constructor for that. Inject I employee repository service, bring in the required namespace. Let's call the parameter employee repository and let's also generate the associated private field by pressing control period. A view component does not directly respond to an HTTP request. It is usually invoked and consumed by another razor page, layout or an MVC view. When a view component is invoked, the framework looks for a method called invoke. This method must be public, returns I view component result and the name of the method is invoke. At the moment we are using invoke, we also have the corresponding invoke async method if you want to call this view component asynchronously. We want this employee repository service to return us this employee headcount summary data. We don't have such a method within our service. So let's open both the mock employee repository class and the interface and then include the required method. To this models project, I'm going to add another new class. Remember, in the result set, we want these two columns, the name of the department and the headcount within that department. So the class that we are going to add to this models project is going to contain those two properties. Let's name the class DEPT headcount short for department headcount. Make the class public. The first property data type is DEPT and the name is department. The second property data type is integer because it's going to contain the count of employees and the name is obviously count. Next, in the employee repository interface, let's include a method that is going to return us an I enumerable of department headcount. Name the method employee count by department. Our obvious next step is to implement this method within mock employee repository class. If you recollect from our previous videos in this series, our in memory list of employees are present in this private field underscore employee list. So we are going to write a link query in our new method. Return underscore employee list dot group by employee department. This groups employees by department. Once we have the employees grouped for each row 
in the group we want to create a new instance of the EBD headcount because that's what we are returning from this method. So for that let's use select and create a new instance of the EBD headcount. And then we want to populate the department property. To get the department, we use the group dot key dot value. The key is the department because that's what we are grouping by. And we also want to populate the count property. And to get the count, use count method on the group. And then finally convert this to list. This is a standard link query. If you're new to link, please check out our link tutorial. We can now call this method from our headcount view component. So in the invoke method on the employee repository, let's call employee count by department, store the result in a variable called result, and then return a view from the invoke method. To the view, let's pass the result. A view component follows MVC design pattern. This invoke method is like the controller action. It's building a model object here and passing that model object to the view. And this view will present the model data. Though a view component follows the MVC design approach, it can still be used in both the project types. That is in an MVC project as well as in a Razor Pages project. Our obvious next step is to create this view. But the question is, where should we place this view? And how does ASP.NET Core runtime finds the correct view? In a Razor Pages project, it looks for a view at this path. In the pages folder, it looks for shared inside that components. And inside that, it looks for a folder with the same name as the view component. In our project, we named our view component headcount view component. So it looks for a folder with name headcount in the components folder. The suffix view component is not required. And in that folder, it looks for the view. By default, a view file is named default.cshtml. In an MVC project, it looks for the view file at these two locations. In the pages folder, we already have a folder with name shared. Inside this folder, let's create a new folder with name components. Inside this folder, create another folder that has the same name as our view component. Our view component is headcount view component. So let's create a folder with name headcount. We place the view file in this folder. So right click on the folder, add new item, select web. We want to add a razor view and let's name our view default.cshtml. The model for this view is I enumerable of DEPT headcount as you can see from the IntelliSense because that's what we are passing to the view. We want this view component to present the data as you can see right here. We want this heading and a table with these two columns. So here is the heading and then we want a table. Let's style it using bootstrap classes table and table dash bordered. Inside the table, we want table head and within the table head, we want these two columns, department and headcount. And then we want table body. Inside the body, let's use a for each loop and loop through this I enumerable of DEPT headcount. Create a loop variable. Let's call it DEPT headcount. In model, as we are looping through for each record, we want a table row. Inside this table row, we want a table cell. Inside this table cell, we want to display department name. We want another table cell. And inside this, we want to display the count of employees. With this, we have completed the view part of our view component. All that is left right now is to use this view component wherever we need it. We want to render it from this details razor page. To render a view component, we use component.invokeAsync method. To this method, we pass the name of the view component. Our view component name is headcount view component. So we pass the string headcount. The suffix view component is not required. On the details razor page, let's include a div element and then use the bootstrap class call sm8. So it spans eight columns wide, just like this other div. And then use await component.invoke async 
To this method, pass the name of the view component, in our case, headcount. With all these changes in place, let's run our project and see what we've got. We are on the home page. Let's navigate to the employees list page. When we view details, we see the employee headcount summary as expected. In our next video, we'll discuss passing parameters to a view component. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.